On Monday, the Arkansas Senate passed by a 27 to 8 vote the Save Adolescents from Experimentation Act, or the SAFE Act, which protects children from dangerous drugs and irreversible surgeries on the unscientific theory that they were born in the wrong body. This is a part of this transgender craze that's being pushed by the left all across America. The bill is now with the governor, Governor Asa Hutchinson who has until Monday morning at 8.44 a.m. Central Time, to be precise, to sign it, veto it, or allow it to become law without his signature. Now, here at the Family Research Council, we've been working to rally support behind this legislation and getting people to reach out to the governor and encouraging him to do the right thing. And you could do that by going to TonyPerkins.com and following the links over. Now, this needs to be done because in in terms of your voice, your activity, because the left is putting a lot of pressure on him to veto this because this will be one of the first in the nation. And there's other states poised to do it, but they want to try to stop this before it ever gets started. This is an issue that has become very uh, prevalent when we're talking about the sports issue. The transgenderism, and we, we've seen states pass those measures. This deals with the issue of the basically mutilation of teenagers' bodies. And as pointed out, this is irreversible in many cases. Uh, so where does it stand? What are the prospects? Why is this important? Joining me now to talk about this is the bill sponsor, uh, Representative Robin Lundstrom. Robin, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, this is now on the governor's desk, waiting for him to make a decision. Any idea what the governor may do? No, I have no idea. I know he cares about kids, so I'm hopeful. But I think he needs to hear from people that he's got, that we have his back, and that he has the support of the people of Arkansas. And, And that's up to us now. We need to let him know. I'm sure the loud left and I'm going to use that term, loud left, is being extremely uh, vocal. But I know there are people on both sides of the aisle that care about kids, and this is important to speak up for kids. We're not telling adults what to do, but we are protecting children. So this is important. Now, I know I gave uh, kind of the the 30,000-foot view of this legislation. Did I miss anything? Explain exactly what this does. Well, precisely, it prohibits sex change procedures on children, and there are two ways to do that. There's, of course, surgically, but then there's also the chemical. This is giving drugs to children that are puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. And so when a child says, hey, I I feel like I'm transgender, and they put that pressure on the parent, and, and it's scary as a parent to face something like this, but there is counseling, and the bill doesn't block counseling. Sadly, the bad guys have gone out and told everybody that this is going to take away health care from transgender children, and that is simply not true. This provides all the health care for children that any child would need, but it doesn't, and it stops. Hopefully, this is what we hope it will do, is stop any gender reassignment procedures on a child. And we know that you can't take that back. Right. And these kids are extremely vulnerable, and they need to know that they are cared for. I think we're going to have, in a, in a few years, kids that are going to want, turn around and wonder, where are all the adults? Right. Where were you? Why didn't you do something? So, yeah, we're already because, hearing we're, we're hearing that from those that went through this process. Many tr- those individuals that have uh, were, were transgender and are reversing that, are attempting to reverse that, are saying, you know, I wish someone would have said something. Mm-hmm. We are. You know, it, it's, I hope people will call the governor's office, and I hope they will go on the website, sign the com, and I hope they'll call the governor's office and have the governor's back. You, you know, Robin, it, what, what it kind of indicates to me that this is more political than it is a health issue is that on almost any other decision that a, a underage individual would make, With the exception of abortion and now transgenderism, we won't let them make those decisions uh, because we consider them to be too young and impressionable to make such decisions. But yet two decisions that could alter, will alter uh, their lives in dramatic ways and in some cases, as we're talking about here, irreversible, 
we say, oh, we, we shouldn't restrict their ability to do that. You're completely correct. And, and I have a, a list, and it, it goes on and on, but just to give you a short idea, alcohol, tobacco, driving, drugs, smoking, you can't go in a casino, um, purchase a lottery ticket, a hotel room, you can't rent a hotel room, um, open a bank account, rental property, um, spray paint. You can't even purchase spray paint or change your name, but we're going to let them change or try to attempt to change their gender. That doesn't work. No wonder these kids are so vulnerable. Um, somebody who is going through this process of trying to reassign their sex is 19 times more likely to commit suicide. These kids are vulnerable and they need protection. Wow. Uh, that music means we're out of time, but, Robert, you're going to be joining us tonight for our Pray Vote Stand, so we look forward to continuing that conversation tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Robin, thank you for being with us, and thank you for your courageous leadership there in Arkansas. 